Hello, everybody, and welcome to Hukalo TV Human Colony Saturday Live Webinar with James Charles. Today is June 4th, 2016, and we have some guests and things here, don't we, Valerie? We sure do. Uh, we'll start out with Christine. we go to Elle. Hi. Ray. Sam. Sarah. Sheer. Will. And myself. And Jim, it looks like you have a full house today, too. Okay, I have some visitors. I have Carolina from England here and Joe from Pennsylvania. So say hi, you guys. And uh, I have Mark Zinzo and John Bailey and Angela Speed and then myself. So did I miss anybody? No. Very good. And we had a couple that couldn't show up today because they had other previous commitments. But uh, we have a lo lovely group. It's very warm in here. It's, it's good energy. And um, welcome, everybody. Thank you. So. I believe your screen has frozen, Jim. Oh, no. I'm moving now. Am I not moving? It may unfreeze. We don't know. Yes, it, it's not... Everything is good. We'll so work far. with it. Hopefully, it will come back to us soon. Yes. Can you, Matt? I think it should be unfrozen. I don't see it frozen. Do you? Not frozen to us. It's not frozen to us. Oh, there's Brian. Yes, it's frozen on our side. Can you hear my voice? Yes. 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 But, uh, see, on our side, we can. Oh, now see you're not frozen. You're good oh. now. It was not frozen at all any of that time. Okay. So. Well, we'll move on then. Okay, cool. Before we, get, um, before we get too awful far, I would like to remind people that sometimes we do take questions on the Google Plus uh, events page. So if you're looking for a place to post a question, that would be a place to do We may not always get to all the questions, but you can post your questions there. Okay. Excellent. Thanks. Okay, Jim, shall we see who's around and wants to come in and speak with us today? Yes, okay, very good. I'm a, the air is a little, like, sparkly around here, so um, uh, we'll have to um, get myself together here. I'll do a small meditation, and we'll see who comes through. Great. All right? Thank you, yes. Greetings, I'm Ish. Welcome. I've heard so many people commenting lately about the condition of the world and all the different high and secret societies and how they are worried and are getting very, very anxious about things that are coming. It is true that there, all the secret societies and all those that are involved in things that are Earth 
related as far as governments and economies and things of this nature are becoming nervous because they see the changes coming. They are not coming as quickly as some might want them to come. However, they are on their way and there are many things that are going on in the world that these secret societies and huge societies actually are doing to prepare themselves for the coming uh, time. Now many have predicted that in the fall sometime that many things will change and that the, the actual fourth dimensional energy will be different as well. There is many different uh, speculations and some of them are not speculations but actually they got some information ahead of time for some of these things that are going to happen. It may not happen exactly like they say but they are in the midst of happening. So therefore fourth dimensional energy is shifting fourth dimensional energy is bringing in other thought processes and other uh, shifts in your day-to-day -day life. It has not really happened much yet. It's a gradual change. If it were to happen quickly, you would not be able to really handle it. It would be a split from reality. So this is why slowly the fourth dimensional energy is building up and causing some things you may notice to change. If things seem a little different than they did yesterday, and you're not sure why, it is because your perception of the day has changed. Perhaps uh, things are not quite as orange or green or yellow or red or some portion of color has changed or perhaps some portion of actual uh, the way you see your flowers or the way that you see your animals or some people that you look at look different today than they did before and they will continue to look slightly differently to you because your perception in your brain the fourth dimensional energy is shifting words may be look differently uh, in fact it has been noticed that some words have changed in literature you will look in literature and some words have changed um, I will not give you any examples of that right now, but there are many places on the web where you can find that. But um, from the, 19, the early 1960s to now, the spelling of some words have changed. The thought processes about some things have changed. And therefore, it is subtle. It is subtle, but it is definite. So these are the kinds of things you will start to notice. The things will start to change. Your perception of reality will start to shift slightly. And as it sl shifts slightly, things in reality will also shift, not because of your brain, but because you are in a new uh, extended timeline area. Does that make sense to you? Now. I know there are a million questions coming from that, so we'll start with that because, before I go any farther. Continue. Good morning, Jim. I have a Good question morning. from Sabrina, actually. And well, this is Ish. Hi. Hello, Sabrina. Yeah, she would like to know that what makes helping with the weather different from helping each other? With, with like dangerous ETs entering our sphere. So, well, she would like to know if any of them are protecting us from other, de other ETs who may not be uh, so nice. Well, there is government involved. Of course, there's a the galactic law, which must be followed or else there is consequences. Also, there is those that are in charge of enforcing the galactic law and they they are also men in black which is on the planet and those that are off planet in some of the different places that are do watch the earth very carefully for those that are not supposed to be there now some are not detected and some they don't care about because they're not 
really there in an unsafe way or doing anything that is prohibited. But the very fact that they're on the earth should be a fact that they should be removed because it, at this time, earth is off limits to being actually 3D on it. Now, many are 4D, and so therefore it's a rather questionable situation. They let them go, especially if they're in areas like South America or Africa or places where uh, the governments really don't really don't care that much about it. But if they're in the United States or Russia or China or Australia or England or wherever, they these people, these governments care about uh, third dimensional aliens being present. So, and yes, there are those in the solar system that are helping each other and work together to keep things informationally uh, up to date so that those people in charge of uh, securities and things of that nature know what's going on. It, did that answer your question or did, was there something that I missed there? I think you covered it fairly well. Thank you very much. Very well. And now, if Sheer could ask a question, please. Very well. Hello, Ish. How are you? I am very well. And how are you? I'm very well. It's been a while since you've been here. It's good to be in your presence. Well, I've been in this area. I was speaking to people yesterday, and I've decided that it was time for me to make a little presentation about what the changes are going to be. I haven't even gotten halfway through that yet, but we are, But this portion needs some attention. I see. Um, my question, is it going to start in the fall around September, and is it going to be as strong as the blood moon a year before that? It, in some ways, yes. There, we are headed into a solstice right now that is going to be very powerful, but it is more of a calming energy solstice. This is more of a, this uh, solstice coming up is going to pacify the earth in some ways and bring loving and warm energy to the earth for a, a period of time before you hit these, the solstice, uh, the uh, equinox in the fall. And also before there's many things that are going to happen in the fall. So therefore, um, yes, this will be a lovely time after this solstice, a very gentle time, but things will continue to change. The fourth dimensional energy will continue to shift, but it'll be, it, it is purpose is that it is to help it do it very gently and not be very, very disruptive, which it could possibly be if it was done quickly. I see. And last time that we spoke, you told me that I I would, might uh, be able to do something. And yes. there is a, an opportunity to do so. Can you just tell me if it's going to be successful or not? Because I don't want to reveal too much. If you know it what I'm going speaking. To be, in the sense that it, the things that should happen will happen. And that way it will be successful. Yes. Okay, thank you very much and much love. Okay, much sir. love to you as well. Let me add to that that it has a distinct purpose what you're doing and and um, it may not all be what you think it is, but it, it is a very good thing. Thank you. Continue. Hello, Ish. Is Sarah? How are you? Sarah. Yes. <laughs> Hello. How are you? I am fine. <laughs> I'm doing well, thank you. Um, one, thank you very much. A question is popping up in my mind about our connection, uh, you and I-ish. Yes. What is it? And then there's a being who keeps trying to come in as I'm listening to you. So Yes, okay. Very well. I do not... I am not around the earth all every day and every second, but I do work with some people of the earth because this is what I am here to do. I have taken an interest in a certain set of people on the earth and I will be helping them move forward 
in the things that they are doing because it is important and it is it is uh, helpful for the dimensions it is helpful for the earth it is uh, helpful for ascension the being that is trying to uh, speak to you is a friend of mine named Adikar and he is from Ishkar as well ascended master but um, he is not yet acclimated to know how to actually channel through humans in a proper way so just um, let him go he's fine he's safe okay but what is my my personal connection to you then my personal connection to you is that I am a trainer in some ways I am going to be with you more often in the future but right now there are things that you're going through that you have to go through right now before I can actually do what I need to do very well thank you you're welcome <laughs> and um, is there anything you can kinda of prep me on for the fall uh, I was I'm well not was um, I am in the process what do you mean of I mean, I'm in I'm the process that now. Of I'm preparing event. everybody for the fall. <laughs> yes, okay. I'm prepping everybody for the fall because um, it's not one person is being prepped, but everyone. You okay. see, they have to be aware that the changes that are coming are very interesting. Not and they're subtle right now, but they will not be subtle in the future. There will actually be a divide in in fourth dimensional people and third dimensional people in the sense that fourth dimensional people will be able to uh, do a bit more see a bit more and uh, feel a bit more so it is going to be a it, it will cause a slight divide in some people's thought processes with third dimension and third mm -hmm. dimension with the fourth dimension so mm -hmm. be aware of that and try to acclimate it to try to fill in that gap because it it will cause a gap in your understanding in some ways especially for third dimensional people who do not understand what is happening it will cause a what's going on kind of effect and they will start to look at people that do know what's going on as that they're not understanding what's going on because they do not feel it the same way. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. They, there will be a disconnect. Mm hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Much love to you. Much love to you as well. Hello, Ish. How are you? I am amazing. I know that already. <laughs> of course you do. I had a I had a connection question as well. Uh, how how we're doing on our connection and how uh, other things are going? Uh, if you could give a short report on some of your like earthly things as well, of things that you know that are going on. Uh, I'm not sure I understand. I'm um, yeah. Like, Can you give like, me an example of what you're talking about? Like, like more because ascension. I don't want to give it. Oh, the ascension. The ascension. More, more ascension. News. Yeah. How's the how's how, well? Maybe let me not ask it that way. How how's our group doing? How how's Hukolo doing on, as a whole? Hukolo is a very uh, Hukolo is a very special group of people. I don't know if you realize that or not. It's been discussed many times, but there is a connection with the group of Hukolo that is permeates throughout. There it is all past life people here they have they're reconnecting for a purpose of of present life energy now these people that are in human colony that are moving forward you see it we've discussed this before where the the people get to know human colony but they stay on the outside until they get to know some of the people and then they start connecting with their past life in a way that makes human colony very different than any other community on earth because now many of you have discovered that you are been together many 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 times and that your connection is very powerful and that there must be a reason for this there is and human colony is becoming a great force 
I mean slowly. It cannot be a great... Anything that happens suddenly usually is not uh, very prosperous because it has too many variables. However, as human colony grows slowly, it is gaining much energy in the planet and the universe. So as it's growing slowly, is that giving the time for everybody to acclimate to the new ideas and acclimate to the new energies and then begin to amplify each other? There, there, yes. There's a reason for that. And then so it's all ramping up yes, this, by, by time, design. Yeah. Yes, it is. And you must all get along. And you must all realize that you are all here for a positive purpose. Even though there may be times when you feel that there is negative things going on within the community you must not uh, you must not make negativity spread you must shut it down and bring positivity in its place so therefore to gossip or to tell people that other people are not being positive is not a positive thing so therefore you must spread the positivity otherwise you're going to bring negativity on yourself okay and I see that in the community there's much positivity happening at this time and therefore keep that going and keep your connection strong because this community is very important and others may look at it and say oh it's very quaint or it reminds me of my beginnings or something of that nature but it, it's much more powerful than that. Awesome. I'm wondering if there are any questions in the room there with Jim uh, about this or anything else. Is there someone coming up? I have a question. Come closer, please. You must speak into the microphone. When you were talking about the people that are um, have a lot of power when, and are worried about the money situation and things like that. Do they have the same knowledge and the ability to get the same knowledge as we do? They have the abilities to get the same knowledge, of course, because they are very well connected and they have a lot of energy and power. However, some of the places where they make their connections, the, en the energy is negative. And so when the message comes out, it comes to a negative comes into a, a negative form. Do you understand that? So a positive energy will bring the Im information in in a positive form. Now you would say, well if it's the same information, how can it be positive or negative? It is the way that it is presented that makes the energy and makes the information good or bad. There are many presenting information all over the world that may be true, but they're making it into a negative scenario whereas it's actually working for good and they could use that information as a positive scenario as to where they are heading compared to where other people are heading does that make sense to you so now let's take the negative energy and make it positive because this energy if you put in negative into negative it makes it stronger if you put positive into positive it, it makes it stronger so where would you rather be I mean it's not all love and light I've heard people say that oh I get so sick of love and light if, if you say love and light to me one more time I'm going to throw up but um, it is a matter of positivity and that is not necessarily all mushy and gooey and lovey. It is positive and it's strong and it's important that you put your energies into the positive. So therefore you know that you are heading in the right direction and therefore if you hear someone say love and light you don't have to feel sick. You can feel actually motivated by that because you know that their energies are going into the right directions and putting things in the right perspective for the proper future. The proper future must be had by your species. The ascension in the proper way must be done. And that is why I am here today to tell you about all many different changes that are coming.
and why it is important to stay positive and why it is important that you don't get sick over love and light and things of that nature and, and, and feel like everything is ooey gooey because it's not. It's important. It's, it has to maintain str a, a certain strength to be able to push through many of the negative things that are coming. If you are weak and, and you fall into great negativity, that, that causes all those that are very positive to have a great amount of more effort to bring you out of that negativity at this time. So try to keep yourself in a good positive place. So that when this, these times come, you're not dragging and pulling everyone down, but leading and pulling everyone forward. Be a leader. Dear Kappa, come speak to the microphone. Hi, Ish. Uh, can you tell us a, um, a little bit more about any significant changes coming? Yes. As I, I was going to do that. But I want to make sure that all these questions are answered first. Is there any more questions before I move forward? There's an unrelated one. Yes. Somebody was touching my head before. Yes. There are many spirits here and many entities. Right. And so therefore, for me to identify them all would be most maddening. But... um. The thing is, yes, there are many spirits here and many orbs and many uh, those that are listening because the information, they are giving energy to it because it is important. It's very important. Is there any more questions? Yes, I do have uh, L would like to ask a question. Very well. Hello. Hello, Ish. Uh, yes. Nice to meet you. I I didn't understand what was your species. We Where did not say what our species from? was. Yes. Can you just tell me? I'm an ascended master oh, and I live around yeah, Ishka. Yes. Huh. Uh, but I did not name my species because it is not important. I am in the spirit at this time. And so therefore that is what is important. Besides yes. I think some people will be would be very, oh, well, I don't want to say anything that might throw things off. So okay. let's just say that Ishka, I'm an ascended master and I live around Ishka and I am here to help with the ascension and with the information of your planet. Thank you. We all live to be ascended someday. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yes. Um, um, about the past life regressions, I wanted to have a confirmation for one I received recently uh, for my past life as a young boy which lived in New England. It came to me one morning and um, it yes. seemed that my, my whole family died from the plague. I saw them, yes. I saw their faces. They say said hello to me and it was very interesting but uh, I didn't know why I understood that at this moment it is something that is related you see you've been through something that has been very devastating and this yes. is going to give you the strength to go through other things that are not so kind not so good and to keep a positive attitude because you know that things will work out you know that things are going to end up in a positive realm. So therefore, keep your thoughts in that positive realm. And because you saw something that was very negative, but yet, at this point, it's showing you that you were alive, you survived, you were part of the positive effect of these things in some ways. Continue to use your positivity to be strong. Thank you, Ish. Much love. You are welcome. And yes, you were in that scenario for sure. Okay, now we have a question from Johannes, if that's okay. Johannes. Yes, he says he had a dream two weeks ago. 
and it was a demon telling him things about crystals. And yes. he would like to know if you have any more information about the dream and what purpose it serves. The purpose it serves is that the crystals and stones of your planet and off planets are now become empowered. They're much more helpful than they ever were before. They're much more in tune to what is happening in the, on the planet than they ever were before, and this makes them much more useful. And yes, there, the crystals in his case will be very, very helpful and powerful for his intentions. Crystals and stones can be given intentions. Of course, they have their own benefits without even be given be given an intention but at this time they are coming into their own they are becoming more uh, beautiful the earth energy has modified their usefulness and has modified their um, their door endurance even with their strength some crystals had to be um, re-energized every month or so now they can go very many months without be, being recharged because the energies of the earth are in tune with them and bringing them a lot more power. This is why people are now starting to dream of crystals, use crystals more, make their grids, and their grids are becoming much more powerful. And people are starting to recognize, children are starting to recognize that crystals are more than just stones and more than just pretty. But they have energies and powers. And I know that there are some children that even speak to their stones and crystals and get responses. Continue. Hello, Ish. I have uh, a couple member questions. Yes. Let me get to them. From member Michelle, our friend Michelle. Yes. Uh, she, she says, my love to Ish. Mes uh, she wants to know if you have a message for her. And then she asks, uh, was the entity removed a couple of days ago, the same one that you removed a few weeks ago? So I guess it no, was... No, it wasn't. So there were different entities, and then um, do you have, uh, what's this? Yes, oh. I see that, that there are many forces trying to combat you because you're a very powerful healer. And also, you're, there is something very open about your fourth dimensional energy that makes it very powerful. Do not let these other entities spoil that. You are unique. You are special, and this is something that is going to be used. You may not see the purpose of it at this second or this month, but your fourth dimensional energy is very, very large, and it is expanding even now. So there is a reason for this. Take heart and keep yourself positive because you will be a part of something beautiful and okay. powerful. She'd also like to know why her pendulum is going crazy. There's something about a, her, I guess I'm assuming it's a crystal pendulum that's, that's acting or behaving in an odd way. Just, all right. If your pendulum is not behaving, then you do need to cleanse it. And perhaps um, there is you had spirits around you before. There may be a spirit in the pendulum. I would set it in the sun and set the intention that the sun purify this crystal and make it beautiful and pure once again. And that, the, that if there is anything, a spirit within it, that it's not welcome. It, it would have to be a small spirit and probably not very powerful. So let's just say will cleanse that out of there. Okay. She's responding to that one moment. Very well. And what what is she saying? 
Well, I'm, and she's still typing it. <laughs> it's, ah. We're in real time here on, on this one. Yes. <laughs> she says, thank you. I love you so much. Any tips on... Any tips on how to do something, I'm sure, but I don't know what the something is yet. She <laughs> she got so excited in on keeping the yes, negative I entities away. Way. Yes. She wants to know about how keeping the negative entities keep, away. Mm -hmm. Yes, and how to stay positive. Let's say it that way. I'm going to give you tips on how to stay positive, not how to keep away bad things. Okay, or then. to keep positive is to live in the positive energy. And whenever the negative, whenever you are thinking about keeping things away, then you're actually giving them a little strength. You're giving them a little energy because you're thinking about them. Think about the positive. Think about the goodness that's coming. Think about those things that always help you, that always bring energy, that always bring enlightenment, that always bring you into a good sense. You see, we have to get away from looking at things as being, um, oh, I can't go there, or I can't, or I can't do that. It's all sort of the the negative sound. But you want to involve yourself where you can speak positively. Now, a lot of people are involved in learning about the negativity because they feel that if they learn about it, then they can uh, get rid of it when it comes, or they can defeat it, or they have ways that they think that uh, they can defeat it. If if they learn about it, then it you know keep your enemies closer, so to speak. But if you are living in the positive, they're not going to be any. They're not going to be very powerful at all. You may recognize them for what they are but they're not going to be able to do much to you if you are moving forward in the positive and not giving them any credence. Oh, there's always those third dimensional things, fourth dimensional things, like death and dying and things. If these things are not negative, I know that there are some things on your planet, like death, that people look at in a very unhappy, sorrowful, and negative way but they are moving into a new energy a new life pattern and it is a, actually very joyful and beautiful for them and if you would look at that as a, a very positive things oh and some people say oh he broke his arm or leg or he's very sick or whatever it's very awful and negative and blah blah you must look for the positive that comes out of that because I know when you're right next to it, it looks like there's no positivity whatsoever. It's, it's all pain and suffering. However, if you throw positivity into it, if you throw healing onto that, if you throw healing onto those pains, if you throw love onto the situation, if you throw the light onto it, it's not, it's not as powerful anymore. And of course, the body is going to give way. The body is just that. It is a physical manifestation on your planet. And it will suffer, if you will. But you do not have to look at that as being uh, the main thing in your life. You can live beyond it. And many people have conquered pain just with their positivity, conquered diseases with their positivity, and had called people to help them heal. And so that is what we'll do. If you need healing, if someone needs healing, we'll help you to heal. If it is not healing, perhaps it is your destiny not to be alive for much longer or whatever it is. There is a lesson to be learned, but it is not a negative lesson necessarily. You may look on it as a negative thing, but you should not. And I know that is a concept that is so difficult for humans because they were brought up in third dimension and society speaks so much of negativity and how you must fit into the world and how you must be a part of it and if you are who you are and you are a positive person you should not have to fit in to their ideas of 
what the world is because you are creating your world in a different and more positive way. That was a whole mouthful and much to think about and I could talk on that subject for a great deal of time. But let's move forward. Are there more questions? Yes, there are some more member questions. I think um, and um, and um, M Michelle uh, understands those uh, those words that you just gave, so that's that's good. Excellent. Let me um, let me get to uh, the page. We have uh, member Shanman Nolagal. Not sure if his question is spot on. He was recently told from a twin flame Aurora yes. that he was Uriel. Is this true? Thank you, love and light. So I guess he's wondering about his connection to Yurio. One moment, please. I would have to connect to to that. One moment. Yeah, Shanman. And that no, is an important no question. I will answer that because it is an important question in this day and age. And um, yes, you do have a connection to Yurio. Okay. And he says, thank you. And then we have a question. Well, it's kind of a question and a statement at the same time from Amran. Amran asks, uh, hello, all, hello all, much love. Can you ask if I have a healing modality which is unique to me that I can use to heal myself with? Thank you. Of course you do. All humans have the ability to heal. The, the But... The different degrees of energy within each human is different. But as you see your hands, put your, you'll find out how much energy is in your healing modality when you put your fingers together like this. And the reason is this. This is the circuit that your body energy flows. And you will be able to feel the energy flowing through the fingertips. Do you feel that? If it is a very strong energy, it, you are a great healer. Now, if you feel nothing, hold this position for a while. That means you have a blockage of some sort because you should be able to feel some energy going through this area. If you feel no energy going through that area, then you hold it until you feel the energy because there is a blockage blocking the energy from coming through in the way that it should. But you have chakras on the palm, on the fingertips, on the wrist. These are lesser chakras than your, your seven major chakras, but they are healing chakras, also from the third eye. From Some people have the gift of the gaze, which is a healing modality, and the heart chakra. But for yourself, your hands, if you can touch yourself in, in, a, in the places that are painful, you will feel the energy moving into your body and you can heal yourself. There are children um, around the world doing that right now. They can heal themselves from anything. That's how strong they are in this day and age. Now, I do not know how strong your healing modality is, but I'm, I know that you do have one. And even if it's weak, if you put your hand on the area that is painful or needing help, for a long period of time, enough energy will get to it, or if you do it daily or whatever, enough energy will get that, that you will feel some relief or notice some difference. Okay, he's also asking about a, a dream or something. He said, uh, why did the group of people chase him that wanted to arrest him or kill him in the astral? Uh, I don't know if you can approach that topic with him or not on that one. That would be something I would like to discuss. There's many questions surrounding that before I could even answer that. I would have to ask him about ten questions before I could even answer that because there are so many different things uh, about a chasing dream. Some can be very positive and some can be very negative, but I would not know just by that scenario if it was positive or negative. Then let me suggest to Amran that he can uh, contact Jim for a session and he can channel you again and you guys can go over that information whenever that if, happens. If, if he wishes to do that, yes. Yeah, if you'd like to do that, that would be awesome. Right, we have member Eric here who would like to know 
if he is going to be getting help in the area of frequencies in regards to a dream that he had to Everyone is going to be getting some help in frequencies, yes. He said he had a dream that he had to use frequency to revert matter to to energy again. And he uses the example of like the removal of garbage from Gaia. So this is some kind of frequency manipulation for the benefit of things. Yes, he is he has stumbled on um, the idea that vibration and transport, transporters work together, and which is correct. There is certain species that use vibrations to transport items from one place to another. Even their own species, they can transport from one place to another. What is happening is that the vibration is understood. It is collected or it is completely, uh, they can totally get the frequency of a particular item in every single portion. And that frequency is removed from one place and put into another place. Which is to say that they have moved that vibration, that frequency, and all the things that are part of that matter because matter, all matter has frequency, no matter what it is, a stone, a rock, a human, whatever it is. If you take all the frequencies that are right here, in, I will show you like this. If you take all the frequencies that are right here and you have them all exactly correct, you can take them and move them to over here. And they will cease to exist here and they will go into the machine and they will come over here and they will exist in a different place. Does that make sense to him? I think it will as soon as he hears it. That was that it, pretty, pretty because clear. Because that is, yes, matter and energy and light and all these things, they all are together. Because we are all made of light matter. If you go into the inside of a molecule and open it up, you will find light matter there. The div dividing of an atom, everything. So light can be turned into energy, energy can be turned into matter, matter, energy, light, they all work together. But it is the manipulation and how this, how it is done that is the secret. And of course, the, but they all work together, yes. Wonderful. Like to go back to uh, JD's question, Johannes. Um, he says, "Is there? It, ask if there is more information that he's already been informed about, yet not had time to talk about it, because it was a feeling that he had." And also referring to his last question, who was the <laughs> demon, and if there was anything else, because the feeling he has was that she was there to tease him. So he's wanting more information. I don't know why he's wanting clarity on that. I guess he's kind of secretly asking what's he supposed to do about it. Um, I'm not. The, the question is not very clear. But from what I understand that he is asking is that he wanted some more information on the crystals to see if they might be able to help him get rid of this one that's teasing him because he's been having dreams about the crystals, they are not there to tease you necessarily unless you are not using them properly. Now, I'm not sure if you're feeling an outside entity or the actual crystal uh, is trying to tease you. Now, I, I don't know which is which, but I can tell you this. Um, you can use the crystals to help you clarify what is happening by intending the crystals to in, in clarify your uh, thought processes and clarify the situation. Now, after the situation is clarified and you discover if it's a being, an entity, or if it's part of the crystal itself, then you will know what to do because you can intend for that to be used properly or for the entity to communicate in a way that is proper. Does that make more sense to him? I am 
not certain because I am not seeing his um, Very well. Then we shall move on. If he if he chimes back in again, then we'll we'll see what that is about. Okay. I have a question from Noha. Noha, Noha. asks us, Noha Noha asks if Noha. there's any messages for her. Uh, if feels spirits now, my inner knowing is strong. She, she's asking if her inner strong, inner knowing is stronger, and any messages regarding her visits to the colonies. Um, so she's looking for a little update yeah, there. Yeah, very good. Let me give you this, Noha. Um, you are very. You have different channels of perspectives, and they're starting to slowly change because of the fourth dimensional energy shifts and things of that nature, and the divides on the the reality fronts and so do not be alarmed you you're going to experience a little bit of confusion why because you have so many open channels to different things and are are illuminated in different areas and some of these are going to seem like they're changing or you're going to perceive uh, things as you're using these channels in a different way so uh, but you're, you're fine, your fourth dimensional energy is intact, but be careful. You have a tendency to be, to not listen as much as you, you speak. And that's, many people have that. But listen carefully whenever anything comes that's a little confusion. Because they will, if, when, when you're doing your listening, you will hear the sound that is necessary for you. The, the actual words, the actual... It, it might just move you. If you just stop and give it, uh, give it its time, it might move you in the proper direction. But I see that sometimes that can be confusing for you. But you are in a good space. You are right now in a good, very good space. And I'm, I love you very much. And I think that um, I'm so... Uh, uh, you are one of these people that can use many different abilities and you don't even know that you're working in the astral at times and uh, just a very amazing person so keep it up thank you Ish uh, I have clarity from uh, Johannes now uh, what he was concerned about is this this female energy basically said that we humans don't know how to use the crystals properly properly and Yes, I and agree. and therefore it is what it is, and so he was yes. speculating that maybe there's some more crystal. Uh, uh, yeah, what did I said. We need to learn. Yeah, okay. What I said to him was exactly proper. I told him that he needs to intend for the crystals to open up what the proper usage and the proper information to him. Um, so I did understand that question. Okay, wonderful. That's all I have for the current. Um, I'll hand it back right, over to Valerie. Cool. Valerie's handling the other list. All right, there we go. Thank you, Ish. Thank you so much. Ah. Okay, oh, Valerie. Yes. Brian would like to ask a question, if that's okay. Oh, very well. Hi, Brian. Hello, Ish. How are you, my brother? Oh, wonderful. It's so good to see you. <laughs> Thank you so much. My question deals with um, a certain race um, that's not widely known, that's more in our oceans. And, and I was just wondering, can you give a little bit more clarity on who the Clares are and what their purpose is on the oceans, in the oceans? The Clares are under the Pacific, Pacific Ocean, Ocean, very deep, yes. Oh, I'm sorry, did I miss part the, of the question? Yeah, just uh, a little bit more detail on... Uh, who they are, or what's how long have they around about how long have they been here on this planet, and what are they doing to assist or to affect the changes of Earth? They're rather neutral actually right now, but they but they are helping the Earth in one particular way, and that is they're starting to remove uh, radiation from the Pacific Ocean. And the reason they're doing that is not to help Earth, actually, but to help themselves. Um, they are, are a community of hybrids. Um, they, are rel they are part reptilian and part gray, which is a very unusual hybridization. Some people say they're gray. Some people say they're reptilian. 
but they are actually a hybridization of both of the civilizations. And they live far below the ocean in, under, uh, in domed cities. And the radiation was starting to get to their cities, so they started to help Earth remove it. Now, along with the dolphins, they do work with the dolphins and whales because they are very aware of who they are and that they are from uh, the whale and dolphin uh, alliances in, in Andromeda and Pleiades and that they are the light keepers on the Earth. So they do work with the dolphins and whales for communication on some things. They are one of the very few species that can understand the trinary language that is spoken by the dolphins and the whales. So, and they are actually not a harmful species. They were once given, uh, they were once accused of being the ones that uh, were ca causing cattle mutilations and things of this nature. That was coming out as, as the, the Clares were doing that, but that was actually the Cabal doing that to uh, cause negative uh, alien appearance. They were doing that so that they could uh, blame it on the aliens and make people afraid. Mm -hmm. So I, I would, would like to just dispel that rumor about the Claires. That was not them at all. So therefore, um, yes, they are actually very peaceful. They're very neutral. They, do, they are not ones that are they like the earth in the deep sea because it provides them with its safety. They, they were escaping from another species that would want to have war with them, but they do not care for any kind of war. And so they found a very safe habitat at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean, and the other species doesn't care to go there. So it, it is a beautiful uh, separation from their hostile enemies. Do you see the Clares eventually um, moving toward more alliances with maybe like Grip Footnier or others in the future? I That is an excellent question, and I do see that. Good, good. I cannot tell you what time frame that will happen or what kind of thought processes are actually going on with the Clares right now, except what we hear from... Uh, from them when they give uh, information to the Galactic Council and things of that nature because they are in communication with other species and councils and alliances and their thought process is that it would be maybe beneficial for them to be part of an alliance that is very peaceful and loving and that is helping pe other species etc. But at this time their people are very withdrawn and um, find that, uh, still feel that they are in danger in some way. So they live in a wee bit of fear, but they don't really have to at this point. But that, you know, every species has uh, some fears and some negativities. It's just the way it is. No one is, no one is perfect. <laughs> much love, Ish. Thank you so much, my friend. You're uh, welcome. I hope that answered your question well yes, enough. Yes, very much so. Thank you. Okay, Excellent. Sarah. Hello, Ish. Sarah again. Um, I can hardly hear you. Oh, there it is. Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you now. Okay. Um, the, the other person's question about Uriel sparked the dream that I had about Uriel. He yes. was speaking to me through my mother, but I don't remember the conversation. And I was wondering if you could connect to his message that he had for me. Yes, it's in your subconscious at this time. It is a message that is very much... It came from your mother because it was a message from another authority, like a mother figure. Do you understand that? And so okay. it was try, trying to tell you that there are certain things that uh, you must let go of. A couple things that you must let go of. Some, um, some. Um, there are there are certain people that get on your nerves, but you must let it go. <laughs> All right, that was Uriel's because, message. <laughs> but he didn't say that at all. But um, 
it's my paraphrasing to make it much shorter. He said it in a long, drawn-out way that made it sound wonderful and sweet. But I'll just tell you that there are some people that get on your nerves or you, you're not crazy about, but they're not negative people necessarily. So don't put that attachment on them. Okay. And I was okay. wondering, your yes, thank you. And I was wondering, your friend who's trying to connect me, he keeps coming, and I'm trying to help him pull his energy in. <laughs> yes. Oh. But it's just a, one of those lovely little messages that that says keep moving forward in positivity. So that's great. okay. What's happening with your friend, your your Ishkar friend, who he keeps trying to connect and it's not really happening. No, no, it's not going to happen. But he just likes your energy. That's all. Oh, okay. He's not actually, really trying to connect. He's just like soaking in your energy a little bit because you're, you're, he, th he likes it. Because it keeps putting me in trance, so I'm, I'm just like, what? Yeah, yeah, he likes trance. Oh, yes. Uh, let, me, let me talk to him for one moment. Oh, okay. And I'll, I'll have him leave your side because you're trying to concentrate. No, that's okay. We're, we're, we're good. Oh, all right. We're good. Never Thank mind. you. I thought maybe I needed to help him or something because I started. Oh no 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 no! He's just very. He's just sort of a lovey dovey kind of spirit, you know. Oh okay. What's his name again? Just by the way. He'll tell you. He'll tell me. He said I'll tell her. Oh okay. It is. His, it's protocol for him to tell you. I shouldn't have said anything in the first place. Very well. So, uh, so he'll tell you. He'll give you his nickname. So that's fine. His nickname. Okay, thank you so much, Ish. Very, very good. Mm -hmm. Shall we move forward? Yes. L, would you like to go ahead? Ish, hello again. Hello. Uh, I would like to invite you in my astro curriculums because I'm working a lot in the astro with the for dim dimensional energy. I Very know well. We can see this, so I would like to invite you, and I'm looking forward from receiving knowledge. I appreciate your work. You're very yes. concerned about the people of this earth. You're very uh, people-oriented when it comes to their well-being. So I appreciate all the work that you're doing in the astral. Also, you love the children. Oh, my. Yes. Um, <laughs> And that is a beautiful thing as well, and we love having you on the uh, at the nurseries on uh, Maya yes. and on uh, Era and um, yes. Zika. Thank Very, you. It's beautiful. <laughs> I'm enjoying it, but it's uh, um, it's drawing a lot of energy from me from time to time. When I wake up, it's a bit. Um, in the 3D reality, I, I'm not able to concentrate as much because well, I, I don't know. Tell them not to take you some nights. If you want to lay down and rest, say, okay. don't take me in the astral tonight. I need my sleep. Because Maybe. sometimes you're one, of, you're one of the ones that will go even when you're tired. So just let them know that you are not, not going to go tonight. Yes, because I, I I didn't know that this is an option, but I'm, I'm probably too excited and I probably say that I want to go every time and um, yes, I will do that. You'll probably, you'll probably to say, time. don't take me tonight and then go anyway. But, um, yes. <laughs> so therefore, yes. so don't blame me. Um, okay. Just tell them that you don't want to go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I look forward um, uh, for, for uh, working with you, and it was. Oh yes, I look forward. Uh, actually, we've worked together once quite a while ago, but I am going to be working with you again very shortly. I do see them. There are Would some areas where uh, you yes. and I can work together very effectively. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes. Much love, and to everyone. Much love. Hello again, Ish. I have a question yes. from member Barbara, Barbara Joy. Yes. She says, does energy come in one hand and out the other? For instance, she's right-handed, so does energy come in from her left hand and out her right hand, or does it matter? And no, she says doesn't. also, no, yeah, well, she says ahead. sometimes her left hand itches, and other times it's just her right hand. Is there a meaning to it? 
All right. First things first. Um, let's say that the energy comes out of the hands. It doesn't go into the hands. It comes through the body through outside means. The universe feeds the body with energy. Mother Earth feeds the body with energy. And the healing hand energy comes out of the hands, out of the forehead, out of the eyes, out of the heart, out of the wrists, out of the fingertips. Not It doesn't come in to the healing air, into the the places that are your healing areas. It comes in to, through the crown or the feet. or The energy comes into your body and out out through your healing areas and so there that is the first thing the second thing is the itchiness is a certain type of energy there are many different kinds of energy there's itchy energy vibrating energy pulsing energy heat energy uh, it's just a, a kind of a healing energy that is being used at that time and if you feel a slight itching itching is a kind of healing energy which means it's almost there, there's almost nothing there, but it does need to finally finish. Do you know when you get a scab, or, you know, and after the scab goes away, it's a little itchy? That is the kind of energy that that is. It's healing that final, the final healing portion of the energy is. It's light, but yet it does what it needs to do to finish up the healing. Okay, awesome. Thank you. That's a, a great, great answer. I know sometimes um, oh, in the past, my palms would really, really itch. They would just really, really itch, and I was always getting, well, like something's being activated there. It's It would do that yeah. to bring my attention to it. So sometimes yeah, so just, just bring my attention energy. to it. Yes, and so go, oh, okay, oh, what am I supposed to do with these? And then go, oh, yes. that's what I'm supposed to do yep. with them. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, someone's so. needing that final healing touch, and that's the itchy energy, and they needed that one final bit. Yeah, so it's, um, yeah, it's just a thing. To me, it's just a thing. It's really easy, but uh, that's all I have for right now. If Valerie has some more. Actually, I believe it's time to bring Jim back right now and offer him a refreshment if that's okay all righty then I well I did have more to say well, well, well um, I think that he can hold right? out just a little bit longer okay um, because uh, there was other than the the uh, fourth dimensional energies changing and and uh, becoming and and making your perception a little different in the future coming it's coming subtly but there's also other changes coming in the way that you will be perceiving the earth. So I want you to just to make you aware that uh, even this election that is coming, no matter who wins, the energy of the earth will be changed by that decision. Because these are three very clearly unique people very clearly and unique different people and each one of them brings a new perception to the way things will be done does that make sense to you these uh, Hillary and Bernie and Donald they are all very very unique and they are uh, and they will bring different perceptions to the way the world is and will change the world in some way all of them the per the percentages of them each one becoming president president is different but i'm just saying that each one in themselves will change world perception it's it's a very interesting time all right I just wanted to, to add that in there because your this election will also affect the entire world because uh, you will just see what I mean when it happens but I cannot give, tell you the actual things that will happen because that will be changing the future because if I tell you at this moment what's going to happen in the future then all thought processes will change and that will not happen. And what has to happen then, I cannot say. So that is how it works. 
Does that make sense to you? I think most people understand that for the most part. Uh, I do have another member question from Slava. Yeah. Member yeah. Slava uh, wants to know, he says, hello, Ish. Hello, could, Slava. Could you please... He says, could you please read my subconscious for any messages from my hybrid children or their parents, please, I guess, yeah. or, or, or any other way to attain that information. I, so he's wondering about his hybrid children oh. and their parents, if you have any, any information that you can offer. Well, let me say this first. Slava, of all the hybrid parents on the earth, you watch after your children most diligently, more than any of the other ones. I mean, there are a lot that pay a lot of attention, but you are with your children almost every night in one or one place or another. And yes, they just absolutely love your attention. And especially Anna, she is amazing and she is brilliant. And she's the leader of the children in many ways. She br she'll bring one to you or, or another to you. And she is very much like you in your talents and understandings so she's learned your language so well and so properly that she knows exactly what you want and who you want to speak to and all the things of that nature so um, brilliant you're a great father of the your hybrid children and they just appreciate it so much you're you have done so much more than most. There are some that are, there are many out there that see their children all the time, but you are just every night, almost every night. There's only been a few exceptions. And your mother has also been rather attentive to her new child. So that is beautiful. That is all I have to say. At okay. This Thank you for that. I'm, I'm sure that Slava loves all that information. I have a, a question that came to me while you were speaking uh, about this idea of the uh, people becoming more aware of their like personal energies and things. So, so there's like the healers are awakening and some other people are awakening and the speakers are awakening and, and, and this kind of idea. And is there, what advice would you give these people, whether it's just like, you know, allow the energies and just remain calm kind of idea or no. is there any kind of thing that you could offer the people who are kind of uh, tuning into their, their abilities are becoming known to them what can they do to stay like calm about it all right those that are driven those are the, that are coming out and feel the drive to be that something is happening they're driven toward the uh, healing they're driven toward the channeling they're driven toward the speaking that is what they should be listening to. They should go with what they are feeling and find it on the web. Find it. Find someone that they trust that they can learn from. Find a mentor in the sense that not necessarily one, just one person, but find a mentor in getting the information that they need to learn all the things they need to do that thing because in this day and age, all that information is readily available and readily jumping out at people. And those that are driven, let me say, I'm using that word for a particular reason. Those that are driven are going to be the ones that are going to stand out because they are going to get all the information that they need. They are going to get find out. They're going to listen before they speak, they're going to learn, they're going to practice, they're going to be amazing. And there are many of them in the human colony right now that are driven to find the answers to many things. And this is, this is something, your highest excitement, if your highest excitement, we'll put it that way, like Bashar says, your highest excitement if you seek that in a very real way, in a very uh, pushing way that you know that, that you will find the answers, that you can't stop until you find the answers, you, will, you are one of the great ones. You are one of those that will be 
that will you you will have everything that you need. You will you will be a part of the great greatest parts of ascension. So one of the good things that we could uh, let the people know to do. So you are frozen, there, Dan. Oh, I shouldn't be frozen. I'm not oh, frozen no, on. Not. I'm not frozen on my end. It's going around today. So would it be yeah. safe to just uh, offer guidance to the people? So the ones who feel that they are. Uh, uh, drawn towards the galactic Reiki to go speak to some of the galactic Reiki people and if you're drawn to toning then please seek out the toning people and if you're uh, uh, drawn to like galactic languages then seek out the galactic language people and and, and just begin yes, making the connections with their with what they're being drawn to exactly but uh, don't let me discourage anybody that doesn't feel like they're derived they will say, oh, I'm not driven, I'm just sort of interested. But that's actually something that you should look into because guess what? You may become driven. You, your highest excitement may ignite any time now because the fire, as Will says, the holy fire is igniting all over the place and he is sending it out everywhere. Aren't you, Will? And I know, I feel it. And it is causing much excitement. It really is. Yes. So it would be safe to say not only to just follow what you're driven, but also to follow your inspired thoughts. So if you are curious about a thing and even, you know, oh, I'm just kind of curious about it, but still follow your inspired thoughts because it may lead to something that drives. You may exactly. find a direction. And be, so the inspired thought might be teasing you to look towards the direction it's trying to get you to look into. So you allow your and guidance you have, to happen. If you have more than one interest, if you have two or three interests, that does not mean that they cannot all be there and not all be useful. If you say, well, I'm most interested in Reiki, but I'd like to channel and I'd like to do this or that, why not look at all of those things and see how that comes into your perception and see how positively it interacts with your person because you can do more than one thing. You don't have to limit yourself to one expertise, say channeling or Reiki or Qigong or, or Holy Fire or whatever. You do not have to limit yourself. You can expand yourself and the, and the and it will expand with you as your interests expand and you might find oh well after you're interested in that it might lead to something else that you're even more interested in but I could tell you many stories about how one person started with Reiki and went to channeling and now they're doing this and that and the other thing but they still do them all and they're still all viable things in their life they're healing and that's satisfactory satisfaction and beauty in their life and bringing them great joy and they're also channeling which is bringing healing and loving nature to other people and they're also going out and working with the people one-on-one uh, -on -one. they're working with the poor they're working with whoever and it's all so lovely that is that is wonderful thank you for allowing me to ask that question I have a, a, a follow-up question from Noha she yes. says uh, she says she's feeling spirits a lot. How does she communicate with them or listen to them? Or I guess she's asking for a little tip on uh, how to hear yes. them better. Like I was saying to her before, she is much into many different channels of thought. And, and sometimes it's hard to just connect into one area for you because you are so multifaceted. So what you need to do is when you feel like there is a spirit coming to you, put them in your heart. Bring them into your heart space and close up all the channels for that moment and see how that works. That might work for you because then only the channel that they can speak through will open. Try closing everything down with the heart. And you can actually connect the third eye to the heart and the soul and if you want to do it that way but close down all the the I uh, actually intend for all the channels that are, are reaching out to other places in the universe have them close down 
and just center on the heart, bring the being into the heart, and see if you can communicate it with them that way. Does One, that make sense to you? Yeah, that's a, that was very seamless. Uh, and another question from member Eric, because Slava's question inspired him. So Eric would like to know, how would he know if he has hybrid children because he uh, thinks the five that he has in real life is enough, and he kind of snickers at that. But he's wondering, are there hybrid children? Has he agreed to the hybrid program that he's aware of, or is there any um, way to answer Eric's question? No, actually, he has not. He said five is enough, and I don't want any hybrid children right now. But m you said, Eric, to them that they could have some uh, DNA material for the future. That is all that you agreed to at this time. Okay, so he has his five human children, and he's offered assistance with his DNA for later. Correct. That is all awesome. he's done. And that is fine. It's beautiful and wonderful, and we understand completely. Um, at least I understand. So it's a wonderful and beautiful thing that you're doing. And your children are lovely, by the way. All right, thank you for that. I don't have any more questions that I'm aware of at the moment. I don't know if Valerie has any more. Well, I would just like to uh, add a little bit of something here, Ish. Um, yes. I am one of those people who is interested in the next thing, always the next thing. I but know. But what, <laughs> what I've found with, um, with the Reiki and with my healing modalities, I, um, I'm really comfortable with that. And what I would like to see happen, and I would like your opinion on this, is for us to build our own pyramids in which we could provide healing for free. It's already world. happening. Yes, there are Wonderful. places that have healing energy abounding on your planet. And when you if you can build pyramids or do whatever, it would be wonderful. Wonderful. Pyramids are so so cleansing, so beautiful, so energetic, so healing. Yes. Do it. If you can do it, do it. Okay, great. That's that's where I would like to connect with 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 uh, the healing as far as I can see for my future. So that is and wonderful. There are, I think, there will be many places in the future that will be built just to house people like human colony, so that they can do healing modalities, that they can do channeling that they could have workshops on learning all the wonderful metaphysical things that are out there now and there are more things coming you have no idea that parts of the brain are going to unlock and you are going to know more things and have maybe classes of just teaching what it's like to live in a world where the the classrooms are not prohibited uh, with just one subject at a time but your children are learning many different things at many different times and it's things that they want to learn and it's things that will better mankind not just mundane things but things that will actually be useful to them their whole life and if there's something that comes up that they do not have that they need they may have it yes that's a wonderful idea um, thinking of the children learning uh, the things we know now uh, and starting out that way uh, learning about the healing modalities in school about yoga things like that that is yes. a wonderful idea and some children on other species in other places start off with learning their creative what it is about them that is creative and understanding perhaps they have math in their on their mind or they have they have creativity art or whatever but yet, all, all of a sudden, they take an interest in mathematics. And they excel because they're interested and they're given that opportunity. You see, whereas sometimes people are sitting in a history class and it means nothing to them, and they'll never use the history. The reason that they're learning it is because it is part of the past and, and they need to know some things about their past. But guess what? In some form in their life as they're growing, they're going to be interested in that if you don't force it on them. Mm -hmm. They'll be f interested in things just because 
they want to learn. And because you've made their learning situation beautiful, happy, and wonderful, and not mundane and boring, and they'll all excel instead of just a few. Oh, that is just the best news. I want to thank you so much on behalf of everyone here for the opportunity to speak with you today. You have really enlightened our whole group and many watching as well. Um, we yes. would like to at this time ask if you have a prayer that you would like to offer us today. I think there's another question in the room. Okay. I, I just want to ask you, my rose quartz broke. Oh. Um, I was wondering if you could tell me if there was a reason for that. One moment. Can I hold it for a moment? It's almost equally divided. Yes. It feels almost equally divided. And it's one half is for you and one half is for someone you're connected to. Okay. And that will bring an even greater connection in some way. Okay. In the spiritual, in the emotional, and in the intellectual. Right. Okay. Yes, that is why it is separated itself. Right. It did not break. Right. It separated itself. Okay. Thank you. Yes, and I will do a I will do a prayer for you now. Did you hear that? Her rose quartz had broken, but it wasn't broken. It actually separated itself into almost two equal parts, and one part is to go to her partner, hmm. and one that's part is beautiful. for herself. Yeah, that's really awesome. I've been drawn to rose quartz late lately. I even picked up this one the other day. Sure. Very excellent. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, you like I that one. I give it a great big hug. It yeah. has so many messages for you. Oh, yeah. it is going, it has, it has six downloads in it. Oh, my goodness. It's yeah. beautiful. It's a big old chunk of rose nice. quartz. It's as big as my head, very nearly. It has that's... multitudes of messages and information. Yeah, lots of rose quartz been speaking out of. Chris or uh, L has her rose quartz up today. It's a rose quartz kind of day. Rose quartz has been calling out lately. I think. Yes, I have yes. a fairly big rose quartz as well sitting here. So that's. I feel I think it's the energy of love coming into us through the new moon. Is it not? Yes. And who else said something? Um, uh, it's L. This is mine. It's from Bulgaria. It's oh, it's from awesome. my land. Yeah. They say awesome in Bulgaria. I wonder. That is wonderful. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. Oh, you know how many downloads are in that as well. There's quite a few. I see at least four right off the bat. So there, your rose quarters are reaching out. It's beautiful. Anyone with a rose quartz look for your downloads in there. I see downloads in all of those rose quartzes. Even in these ones, there's one in each. Okay. So that's good. So that's fabulous. And they do and hold I the will, energy I'll of love, leave. is that right? Pardon me? I said they do hold the energy of love, is that correct? Absolutely. And that's a good place to put a message, don't you think? Yes. A good place to put a download surrounded by love. Ah, just love it. <laughs> so there we go. And I will do a prayer now. Wonderful. Unless there's someone else that needs to speak. Well, I was wondering if Christine had a question because she's unmuted and I'm wondering if she had something she wanted to... She was here oh, initially Christine. and then fell out and then... Yeah, I think she has a question. Um, oh, sorry and, about that. And so, but, but now you're up, so there you go. Ah. Um, I... <laughs> <coughs> Obviously, I don't. I didn't mean to unmute, though. But blessings. But tell you, yes, there was a reason for you to be here, and I yep. wanted to tell you that you're you're getting some messages from your bird friends. There, they're actually bringing you some joy in your into your life. They have some very joyful messages for you right now, and I don't know if you've been feeling that. There's also a donkey that has a message for you. But anyway, um, there's quite a beautiful message 
that is coming to you from uh, one of your donkey friends? Yes, I'm training them how to trailer, how to get into oh. a trailer. And let me tell yes. you, three hours until one of them finally got in. <laughs> yes, but this was a message also to let you know that you're very loved and respected. But your birds are also giving you many messages right now. Try to decipher them. They're very joyful. Oh. <laughs> okay. They are joyful. I love listening to them. Yes. That's true. Well, thank Excellent. you very much. As a matter of fact, I was just going to get ready to uh, go back to training them again. In the mornings, I oh, like to... Oh, you going back to train the donkeys? Um, I'm... Once I start a training program, you have to do it every day. So um, just to keep them reminded, you know, that they get rewarded. And I don't want them to be frightened of being trailered. Of no. course. But they're very happy with you. So they're very calm and relaxed, actually. Oh, good. Um, they don't seem to be um, very hyper at this time. So that's a good thing. Must be the heat. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Blessings to you. Thank you very much for giving me a message. Thank you. You're welcome. Ish, now some are asking how they're how they how to connect to their crystals to find out if they're getting a download or not. Some are asking are they just sleeping nearby them just or just ask, just when you speak to your crystal, say I intend for you to bring me the messages you have for me. Intend it. Intend for them to speak to you. If they have no messages, they won't say anything. But if they do have a message for you, you will know it within a, a rather a short period of time, within a, a day or so. And if there is something coming from them that is love and light or beautiful, they will definitely let you know that there is a message there. And I believe most crystals right now have messages. They're telling you about what is happening with the earth, the earth energies, the earth fourth dimension, the earth fourth dimensional energies, and, and the divisions in the time. I mean, we are moving. I shouldn't say we because I'm really not in your time period except when I'm here. But your time uh, line is actually expanding in the sense that it's no longer a very tight line. It's 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 a loose. It's starting to become a little looser because of the ascension, because of the divisions of your the people on your planet. They're they're becoming uh, polarized in some small ways. Uh, good is polarizing against negativity or positivity against negativity and it's dividing the timeline so you're that is one of the reasons why you're going to find that your fourth dimensional energy is going to divide you from third dimension in some ways I'm just putting that out there it's been spoke to uh, Adronis speaks about this as well I believe and others are going to be speaking about it as well All right. Okay. I will give you my blessing before I go. Um, one more second. We have one more member <laughs> with one more question. Very Sam, well. would you like to go? <laughs> yes. Thank you, Valerie. Hi, Ish. Hello. Hi. I um, I need a little guidance from you. I need some help. I'm a little lost. I need some clarity. Uh, the changes. I I don't know what's going on, but um, can you connect with me and help me a little here? Thank yes. you. You're starting to feel that fourth dimensional shift, as I was speaking about. You do feel a little separation from the third dimension, don't you? Yes. And things don't seem exactly quite right the way they did before. Is that, this, is that correct? Yes. I, it feels so strange. It feels weird. And I feel not sad or depressed, but somewhat kind of like that. But anxious. And anxious, yes. So therefore, yes, just bring your thought processes into a space, into your heart, where you can bring all the good and love. Bring the, all your positive energies into your heart, and then expand it from there. Because 
what is happening is that there you're you're grounding and then it's not grounding and that's grounding and then it's not grounding and you're receiving energy from fourth dimension and then it's going away you're you're fluctuating so therefore bring all uh, ground yourself very nicely pull some energy down you know how to ground and pull up through the fourth dimension right yes do that and then bring that energy right into the heart and you will feel the calmness of those energies merging and it, they will balance you out wonderful great thank you I see that oh there's some situations going on in your life that are causing some of these things to pull apart um, so find your connection in in your heart and rest there for a little while before you even try to cope with these because they're not they're a matter of interdimensional they have some interdimensional aspects to them do you see that I'm not quite understand that no you see everything in the third dimension right now but there is some the reason why you're feeling pulled apart is cause there are some interdimensional aspects to what you're going through so bring all the energy to your heart and just let it set there for a while let that love sort of just be there and let you, let it calm you down you'll be able to um, see things a little more clearly and things will divide into the places they need to go to okay great thank you I love you very much and thank you for asking that question because that not only helped you but it also helped some other people as well okay. love you too thank you some other people are going to take that advice already I see that they went oh I need to do that so yes do it uh, come into a warm space into your heart and just rest there let it rest you don't have to always be like forcing things and doing things you can let the love and the energy of the universe and mother earth rest in your heart for a short period of time while you get things balanced it will help you to balance the, the body and the soul and the spirit all together see because when you have that energy in the heart it not only works on the physical the mental the emotional it works on all areas at once especially if you're calm and let it work wonderful thank you and love and light to you love and light okay it looks like we can move on with the prayer now. Well, thank you so much. I will do so. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. It's been a wonderful time being with you today. Sirata kwak kuncha mwanja cha nyapya dieke pietyo wa unko chot acha. May the love of God and may all things be with you in a positive way. For all things in a positive way makes you a powerful person. Let your heart beam out and strengthen others. Because when you strengthen others, you strengthen yourself. Because it always comes back tenfold. May your love be pure and may your heart be filled I give you great love I wish upon you great wisdom and may it fall upon you in the most beautiful way may you be powerful and instrumental to the changes that your world needs to see I love you all and I give you my blessing, as well as many other species. Be well, 
and grow and shine. Okay, you I believe welcome. we have... Namaste. 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 Blessings, Ish. Thank you for coming. Yes. I believe we have Jim coming back now. Hello. Hey. Welcome back. I'm Hi. back. Hi. How are you doing? Yes, Good. get a refreshment. You, you did a marathon. <laughs> what? I said, get a refreshment. You did a marathon. Oh, well, Ish didn't want to give it up this. No, not at all. Life, so to speak. Ish had a lot of good things to share today. We very much appreciate you bringing him to us. I didn't know he was coming. He came last night and uh, was very informative, and he came again today. I was surprised. But he must be um, in the mood to talk. Yeah, it well, was awesome. It was a little something for everybody. It was great. Yes, yes a lot of Excellent. good things. Does anybody out there want to say a, a closing blessing? Yes. Okay. Um, I have a blessing from the tree beings and from the Andromedans. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Sometimes I wish you could sense life as we do as trees, feeling the wind, feeling the earth, feeling things moving around on you, but not being able to move is still a wonderful sensation, is still the sensation of sentient life that grows within us, that feeds us and makes us beautiful and strong. We see how you are. We envy your movement, but not necessarily your thought processes in it, because we have learned the wisdom of stillness, and we have learned how great that can be. Oh yes, we do move, and we can move about, but many times we choose to stay in one place so that we can experience the quietness of the heart and those things that are important that are not so frenzied and hectic thank you for being our friends we wish to learn more about you in your wisdom let us share ours thank you Nanya <laughs> 
All things, they work together. They move toward perfection, but they never reach it completely. Because in perfection, there is no goal to improve. Therefore, as you move toward your perfection, make sure that there are many goals to reach out and to grasp. When you discover that perfection is the lack of growth, then you will discover that not being perfect is perfect. That not being of the whole thought process is of everything. And that when God is perfect, he is not perfect because he is not yet done creating what he believes will be the perfect universe. So he continues to move out and continues to create. So therefore, when you think that all things are perfect, they will not be. And when they are perfectly not the way they should be, this is when you learn about perfection. <laughs> <laughs> and I smile because we learn together throughout the universe that we are all imperfected beings, but yet we seek that which is greater than ourselves. Be well, and we will be with you to teach you imperfection as it is truly perfect. Thank you. And what is Would your you like name? You must come. あわりよよこてやにやこたやわらあいやにやにやきよととれきてにやれれこんややこわたえりよにやきやりやにやわにやにやそろてやかたやにやわかたるわにあわてれきしよわてやにやことやらややなえてこてよろこわあわ
So, um, wow, that's so close. <laughs> that's two weeks from now. And then after, it's after like the, so close. So two weeks from now, after the webinar, I guess there's some kind of lunch, and then you and I are collaborating doing a healing uh, early that afternoon. Yeah. It'll and be there wonderful. will be, there'll be a um, channeling class at Hot Springs. There will be some Reiki stuff during there at Hot Springs, and I know. Well, I don't know what all you have planned there. You can come and say some of the yeah. things Springs that are is highlighted. Hot Springs in Arkansas, is Arkansas. that correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Let's see if yes, Will's We have a Hot Springs here in Montana, too, so I just want to make that clear. <laughs> there may not be very many people from Montana watching, but there may be other Hot Springs in other states, so yes, we'll make sure everyone knows where this is, just in case you want to show up, because this is your chance to meet and learn from some real pros. Absolutely. Can you guys hear me? We can hear yes. you now. Well. My mic works, yay. Did you have a blessing for us today, Will? Oh, I do. I always have blessings. I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but let me talk about hot springs first. Yes. So, so there are two weeks left. Two weeks left. If you feel drawn and you're on the edge, just sit with the energy of what we're going to do in hot springs. And if you resonate with it, just don't hesitate. But if you're not called to come, then that's okay too. We're going to do some awesome stuff. Saturday is all planned out. Sunday, Spirit has talked to me about many of the things that are going to happen on Sunday, and but in what order they're going to happen. And I know once we get there, things change. Nothing goes according to plan. The <laughs> solstice, the solstice though, is going to be one amazing day. There is so much energy to do practically anything on the solstice. We're going to uh, reactivate let's see, this the quantum crystalline fields, the Atlantean crystalline fields. We're going to be reactivating those. There, uh, and just being able to use that energy afterwards and during the process is amazing. I mean, I'm all lit up right now just connecting in with that energy. And Beautiful. There's still room, and if you're within driving distance, just show up. Just show up. You can make your mind up at the last minute. We'll make room. We'll find a way to have you there. Excellent. That sounds like the most generous invitation I think I have ever heard. So if you feel this in your heart, make sure that you make your track there and enjoy the time that you're there. Learn to relax, channel, get some Reiki. Uh, there's so many things going on, so many healing modalities. Uh, so make sure that you attend if this is what it is called. Yeah, there'll be three kinds of Reiki available. There'll be the Asui Reiki available, the Holy Fire Reiki available, the Galactic Reiki available, just that I'm aware of. Uh, there might even be more that I'm not aware of. So that that's a super duper awesome thing. Um, get with the uh, Reiki with Will website or the Human Colony website and come to the links. Uh, questions about accommodations could be directed towards Will or myself, and we'll try to get things sorted out. Uh, I don't know how much room we have at the house, but there are also other accommodations nearby. An overflow from the house will go to the other accommodations, and we'll sort and that bring out. A tent. <laughs> they, some a tent. are bringing tents, some are bringing blow up mattresses, some are totally free and willing to camp out on the floor. Some, some are really just, they just want to get there. You know, it's really yeah. quite exciting for, uh, for all the different things that are happening. So, yeah. Fantastic. Uh, Sarah yes. is saying that there's going to be tonings available and other healings. There's all kinds. There's going to be activations, uh, attunements, uh, uh, infusions, I'm sure, all kinds of <laughs> something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I have, like I the super quite... psychic fair. There's plenty of floor space still available, and there is plenty of yard space if you love to camp. Pitch a tent. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to have a 24-hour hangout <laughs> for the people that, that would not be able to come in person? 
Uh, we'll see what we can do. I'm not sure what we can do about that, but well, it would be fun to watch. That's for sure. Oh you can yes. See the different people that come through, we... and to uh, see what happens there, and give us an idea, so that maybe next time it comes around, if that, if Whoa. that, uh, if you're yeah. curious if about it, and you get a chance to see it, uh, maybe you'd be more likely right. to go. Yeah, I don't know Whenever if there's, there's going to be a live stream. There. There's cartoons in front of a TV. Or <laughs> a TV in front of you can watch cartoons for a while. Well, till maybe we can... just a hangout during that time where we could uh, see a few things in, in action. You know, maybe not 24 yeah. hours, but... Uh, well, you know what? Think? We could walk around with a, a camera if, it, yeah. if mm -hmm. it's possible, if there's a wireless camera available. Or, or just keep one stationary where you're doing the healing. Yes, a cell phone would be yeah. perfect. Yeah. Bree is coming. Bree is going to be the official videographer of, oh, that's wonderful. of the event. And she will be capturing many, many, many things. There will be live online opportunities. So, and Dan and oh, I good. are getting together today, and we're going to hammer out um, certain things besides car shopping. <laughs> yeah, well, because my car died. Yeah, we're going to go car shopping today. There's a, a car, so if anybody would like to help me with car shopping, my PayPal's been posted. <laughs> yeah. this, this leads me to the end. If anybody is tired of seeing, seeing the fact, if you would like your advertisement here, <laughs> honestly, I actually did a thing just yesterday. You can, you can, if you would like to, if you would like to see put on his coffee mug and you will get advertised. If you'd like to see for something else than, than this crazy mug, <laughs> you can send it to Guru Dan at Post Office Box 342 in Kyle, Texas, zip code 78640. There you have it. Right. Logo. If you're tired of seeing this or send me something different or whatever, or if you don't like my background and you think it shouldn't be Lavender polka dots anymore? Oh, well, <laughs> send some lavender polka dots. Then. Some other than lavender polka dots, then now, now there's a know. way to send physical things through space, and it could yes. end up here <laughs> via that. Called, <laughs> it's called the postal system. Now I have a special request, <laughs> if I may, please. Yes. Our member Sabrina has a loved one very close to her heart who is suffering from some medical issues. Yes. And if we all could please, anyone who knows Reiki, please send it to Al. And our blessings, prayers, whatever you feel compelled to send. Well, why don't we take a few minutes now and do that? Okay, let's include him right now and, and uh, Sabrina as well. Can, can yeah, I do my blessing first? Let, yes. Do yeah, your sure, blessing sure, help everybody get in the right Mindset. It sure will. Excellent. That sounds good to me. Blessing, my friends. I would like to honor the now, this now. This now, you are precisely where you intended to be in this space and time. It does not matter where you've been, you are here and you are now. This now is sacred. This now is. Take a moment and breathe in the divinity of this now. Express your gratitude for this now. You have created this now exactly the way it is. There is only love for you here. Allow that love to permeate every aspect of you. Namaste. Namaste, Will. Thank you so much. Namaste. Namaste. Dan, will you lead us in the uh, uh, healing stuff? That would be wonderful, Dan. Thank you.
Sure. And let me um let me get there. Let me stop doing administrative things and uh, get there. Just a moment. For Alan Sabrina, New Jersey, their geographical location. Sabrina's mental health. Al's heart. Oh. Yes. Al's circulation. Overall, healing for the home. Will the entire space be conducive to healing for all there? There are some here and some watching that are also asking for some healing. Allow it for you all present and away. The energy will go where it needs to go. The energy wants to heal. It's not wanting to be static. It wants to come to you and wants to heal you. Give it that opportunity. The healing is very satisfied with what's going on right now. We can allow it to ride and let it all finish doing its job. Yes. I'm guided to talk here. Okay. I ask everyone to engage into the five dimensional energies. The law of the one. The law of attraction. We are one, for when we breathe in together, we breathe in the new, we breathe in the healing, we breathe in the cleansing. When you breathe in, you breathe in for all of humanity. Take a deep breath and breathe in the new healing for this new now. And when you exhale, exhale for all humanity. Exhale all that no longer serves. Exhale all dis-ease. Exhale all negativity. Breathe in the new. Breathe in the healing. Breathe in the love. Create this new now and fill it only with love and healing. How are we doing, Dan? I'm doing all right. Coming back here. Yeah. Wonderful. I kind of, I kind of vanished for a little bit. Yes, I see that. 
thank Thanks you everybody everyone. for allowing that separate Thanks from the everybody. here a little yes. bit. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us and for participating in this healing session. Know that if you needed healed, you did receive that from the energies. So we thank you again for joining us and thank everyone in the room for yep. joining us and participating today. It's been a wonderful webinar. We thank you most of all, Jim, for bringing in Ish, who is absolutely so, so breathtakingly full of information that it was uh, very progressive. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, I want everyone to know, I'm on fire over here. I'm dripping with sweat because it's so hot here. Wow. I see Dan is too. <laughs> it's a side effect of, uh, Dallas yeah. is hot today. <laughs> well, Texas is, put it and that way. Holy fire yeah. made it even hotter. So. You got yes, it. it did. And it's yeah, holy fire burned you right up. <laughs> All right, thank okay. you, everybody. We'll take the healing with you and thank enjoy you your day today. We thank you again. Yeah. Have a wonderful well, day. Thank you, so everybody. Thank you. Blessings thank to you all. Everybody. See you next week with... Uh, I'll find out who's going to do next week. Well, Most. I still want to get volunteers from some people. <laughs> yeah, that sounded like a great plan to me. Let's work on that this week, Dan. Yeah, well, I think well. that you we should uh, maybe contact, you know, a day and Ivan and Sarah and uh, you know, people that can channel and have at it for. Take you might not want to do a whole two hours. You might want to do a half hour and. Let somebody else do some other things, but right. I'd we'll, like we'll to try to line up a few of this for this yeah. next weekend. Then I, I give, think give there should be a half an hour for each one. All right, we'll see and what comes up. They maybe we can do a 25 webinar so, so that we fit everybody I, in. I that. don't know about the 25 yet. I'm not set up for the 25, but maybe it could happen. Mark can talk fashion. to you about that. Yeah, now, Mark. Let me get with Mark, and then we'll we'll see about the 25. Let's have this meeting off right. air. Let's have Goodbye. this meeting off air. <laughs> Mark said, Dan said, uh, Mark said to Dan, he'll set it up for you, the 25. <laughs> All right, we'll get it. We'll people? get it sorted out. They'll get it worked out, and we'll okay. see you again we'll next week. Thank Thanks you again, everyone. Bye. See you all next Much time. Bye. 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 Bye.